<clears throat> okay, now for question number eight from February, March 2018, paper four, variant to the paper. In this particular question, we're asked to use a sine rule and the cosine rule and some trigonometry kind of stuff. Now, this is something which did not appear in the paper two for the June session. All right. So I'm pretty certain you're going to have to use the sine rule and the cosine rule. Maybe not three figure bearings, but uh, so that was asked in paper two. But, you know, so this is some a topic which most likely, which is most likely to come up. Okay, with, um, sine rule, cosine rule, and so on. <coughs> so I'm going to answer this question on the request of one of the students. Now, the diagram shows two ports, L and P, and a boy, M. Okay. This is a buoy, which is something that floats in the water, not a buoy like a little child. All right, something that floats in the water. The bearing of L from P is 201 degrees. The bearing of L from P. What does that mean? Well, that means you're, uh, you are at P. You're at P, okay, and you want to, you, the bearing of L from P is, tells you how to, to face towards L if you are at P. So you've got to first face north. And then you've got to turn clockwise until you're facing L. Okay, so the angle that you have to turn through from the north clockwise until you're facing L, that is the bearing of L from P. You always draw the north line or you always you know deal with the north line after the letter from after the word from. The letter after the word from the place after word from is where the north line is for that particular part of the question. So the bearing of L from P, at P is the north line, face north, clockwise, until you're facing L. And LP is 248, well that's marked. The bearing of M from P, the bearing of M from P. Okay, now the bearing of M from P, same thing, you're at P. Okay, you're at P, you face north, you turn, clockwise until you're facing M. So that angle over here, which I'll just put in a different color, is 127 degrees. Okay, and it tells you angle PML is 42, which is already marked anyway. Okay, so now it says use a sine rule to calculate LM. Okay, so I need to calculate LM. Okay, so I'm going to call that X. I need to know the angle opposite x to find it okay I have one pair of opposites that's fine for the sine rule you need pairs of opposites I have one pair of opposites so that's okay I have this pair I know this is unknown I need to know at least this angle then I can find what x is and you see I can find this angle because the angle here the angle here which I'm going to mark in a different color to make it clear um, I'm not very good with colors unfortunately Let's say the, um, this color. I think that's different from the other other two. So this color, okay, this, this angle here is going to be 201 minus 127. Okay, it's the difference between 201 and 127. Okay, I'll go back to blue now. Okay, 201 minus 127. Okay, so that will give you 201 minus 127. Four then it's got seventy four. Okay, that's right. That's seventy four degrees. Okay. Whoops. Seventy four degrees. That's equal to seventy four degrees. Okay, so close that. Okay. So I know that this angle here is seventy four. So now I can use the sine rule. The sine rule states A over sine A equals B over sine B or the other way around. Okay, a sine A over A equals sine B over B. Basically the side divided by the sine of the, the sine of the angle opposite that side so x over sine 74 should give me the same ratio as 248 over the sine of the angle opposite that which is 42 that's true for any non right angle triangle any triangle in fact even right, right angle triangles the the length of a side divided by the sine of the angle opposite that side will always give you the same ratio as the length of another side divided by the sine of the angle on the side opposite that. All right, so you can see that from this we can work out the missing length. You have 248 
times sine of 74 divided by the sine of 42 plus multiplication. So again, we can take out our trusted calculator. Let's hope it doesn't crash today this time. Um, we're going to have 248. So I'll just do it, yeah, 248. One second. I'll do a fraction. 2, 4, 8, sine 74. Close bracket, divided by sine 42. Okay, um, always check to see in case it's in degree mode. I also teach AS and A-level math, so sometimes my calculator is in other modes like, uh, like <coughs> radian mode. So I always check because I don't know, sometimes I might have done a question to do with something where I have to change it from this mode. But with you guys, it should really always be in degree mode. But it's always a good idea to check just in case, you know, somebody wanted to mess up your exam or something before your exam and changed it for you, you never know. So always check that it's in degree mode before you start your exam, okay? So here we have 248 sine 74 over sine 42. I think I've entered it all correctly, yes, equals. So you have 356.272, dot, dot, dot. So 356.272. Now use the sine rule to calculate. There's no mention of any uh, rounding issues, it just says calculate, it's a length of calculating, so it should be through three significant figures, so LM is equal to 356, okay, kilometers. Okay, round off to three significant figures at the end. Okay, that's question eight, part A. I'm going to do part B as well, straight away. So it says calculate, it says um, a ship that sails directly from L to P, um, calculate the shortest distance from M to LP. Okay, what did we work out just now? We worked out that this length x was in its unrounded, it's a more accurate form, 356.272. Okay, and we worked out that this angle was 74. So what do we know? We know this angle is 74. We know that this, this side was 356.272. 356.272. That's what we know, worked out so far. Okay, it says calculate the shortest distance from M to LP. Now, the shortest distance between a point and a straight line, if you think about it, the shortest distance between a point and a straight line is going to be the perpendicular distance. Okay? The perpendicular distance. If these two guys were right racing each other to get to this wall, Okay, you know, if one of them goes at an angle, this guy's got a short distance to run, isn't it? It's going to be short. It's going to get there quicker if they run at the same pace. So basically, the shortest distance between a point and a line will always be the perpendicular distance. That's what they're, they're trying to make you realize here. So I'm going to go from M to LP, but we have to go the perpendicular distance. Okay, let's just move this out of the way a bit. Okay, now... So that's a right angle. We've made it a right angle because we want that shortest distance. Okay. This is a bit out of place. Okay. It's a bit better. Now, <clears throat> what do we know here? Well, we know this length. We don't know... I'm putting it in a different color. We don't know this angle. Okay, we know this is 90 degrees. Okay, we know this length. It's a right angle triangle. We can use Sokatoa, but we have to know one of the angles. We don't know this angle. Okay, we don't know this side either. Okay, I can't use Pythagoras. 248 is going all the way from there to the end. Okay, but this is definitely in our triangle. So our triangle that we're going to use looks something like this. Well, it's a bit wobbly here, but it must be straight lines. L, and this is the shortest distance. Let me call it point um, Q. There's no Q's there. Q, and this is M. Right, I'll call that Q. So I know that this is 356.272. I know this is a right angle, okay? But I don't know this angle, and I don't know this angle. However, if you think about LPM, this big triangle, I can find this angle. This angle actually is the third angle out of the three angles in this triangle. The big triangle, okay? So this is 180. Let me go back to my blue color. So this is 180 minus 74 plus 
42. Okay, so you've got 180 minus... minus 74, put in bracket 74, plus 42. <clears throat> that gives you 64 degrees. So I know that this angle here is 64 degrees. So I've got a right angle triangle. I need to find this length here, okay? And I know this length here. I know this angle here. I can use I can use opposite over hypotenuse. This is the opposite, opposite angle I'm trying to uh, the opposite angle I know, and this is the hypotenuse, which is the hypotenuse of the triangle. So I can say that the sine of the angle 64 is going to be equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse written in its more accurate form. Okay, so then I can say x x is going to be uh, three hundred and fifty six point two seven two times the sine of sixty four and then I can calculate it. What's that doing there? Okay, let's move this on this side. So you have um, three hundred and fifty six three hundred and fifty six point two seven two times the sine of sixty four. That gives you 320.215, 320.215, which to 3SF is going to be 320 kilometers. Okay, so that's part B done. And for part C, it says the ship leaves L at 2045 and travels at a speed of 40 kilometers per hour. Calculate the time the next day that the ship arrives at P. So it leaves L at 2045. Okay, so it arrives. It leaves L at 2045, and it arrives at P. Um, it travels at 40 kilometers per hour. Find how, what time it arrives at P. Okay, so this is the time it leaves. Okay, that's the departure time. We're going to find the arrival time. That's what we're trying to find now. The arrival time. Okay, we know that it's traveling a distance of 240 kilometers. So the distance it's traveling is 248, was it? Oops, 248 kilometers, yes. One second, what have I done there? Back in the middle. That's better, I think, yeah. Okay, so it's traveled a, a total distance of 248 kilometers. All right, and uh, we know that it's traveling at a speed of 40 kilometers per hour. We need to know how much time it took. So we know speed equals distance over time. So we know that time is equal to distance over speed. So you've got the distance, which is 248, 248, over the speed, which is 40. Make sure that they compatible. This is kilometers per hour. This is kilometers. That's absolutely fine. There's no issues with changing units there. The answer is going to come out in hours. So we got 248 divided by 40. That gives us 31 over 5, which is 36.2. So that's 6.2 hours it's going to take. 6.2 hours. So basically, you've got to add 6 hours. So you've got 2045. 2045. You've got to add to that 6 hours and 0.2 of an hour. Now, this member is hours and this is minutes. 0 0.2 of one hour, 0 0.2 of one hour, okay, to convert it into minutes, you multiply by 60. So that's going to give you 12 minutes. You've got to add 12 minutes to this. All right, so you end up with here, that gives you 57 minutes and 26. So in the 24 hour, okay, so you see that it's 24 hours is in a day, so it can't be 26, 57. All right, obviously 24 hours in the day, so it's gone two hours over midnight basically right so that's two hours more than midnight you can say all right that's 26.57 we've gone past midnight so you to take away 24 100 hours and you get 257 so it's going to be um 257 the next day 257 a.m or 257 as they gave the time in 24 hour clock format 
it's best for us to give our answer in that same way. But you can't write 2657 um, because, of course, uh, 20, there's not 26 hours in the day, it's 24 hours in the day. That means you've gone 24 hours plus 2 hours and 57 minutes over that into the next day. Okay, so that's the end of that question. Question number 8. Uh, I hope that was clear. And thank you for watching.